to me who's Japanese sake. I'm gonna introduce today's two bottles of Japanese sake. So we can learn about Japanese sake little by little together. Let's check it out. Today's sakes are Sawaya Matsumoto Shuhari Omachi Shuhari Ohaku Mangok. Sawaya Matsumoto Shuhari Omachi Sawaya Matsumoto Shuhari Ohaku Mangok. Alcohol percent 15%, rice polish ratio 55%, Matsumoto Brewery, Fushimi City, Kyoto Prefecture. This time I'm comparing two different sakes. They are made by same brewery and almost the same production process and same alcohol percent and rice polish ratio. But the difference is types of rice. One is omachi and another one is gohyaku mangok. I like to talk about the type of rice for sake today. Most of the premium sake are made by Shuzo Kotekimai. Shuzo Kotekimai is the official designation for rice suited for sake brewing. There are more than a hundred different varieties. Shuzo Kotekimai should be low protein content, large grain, resistant to cracking when being polished, good water absorbency, well-defined shimpak. Most popular Shuzo Kotekima is Yamada Nishiki. It's known as the king of sake rice varieties. Main region is Hyogo Prefecture, next to Osaka and Kyoto. Production is about 35% of the total Shuzo Kotekima rice. Gohyaku Mangoku is the second largest production and about 22% of the total production. Main region is Niigata Prefecture northwest coast of Japan. Omachi is the fourth largest production, about 2% of the total production. Main region is Okayama Prefecture. There are many other varieties of sake rice to explore. While rice may not have a quite the impact on sake as grapes do on wine, it's still a key ingredient in sake production that can influence flavor and even mouthfeel in subtle ways. Let's have a tasting Once time. A little bit yellow. This is a gohyaku mangoku. Aroma is very restrained. It's not that strong at all. Very weak. Little yogurt. A little bit, little bit of fruity. Little bit banana. But very restrained. The sea compared to This is very distraining, but very interesting. This one, this one yogurt, a little bit sourness. I can feel sourness of the aroma. But this one, it's like a milk. Even this one more distraining than we have mango. Let's see palette for the we have mango. Little bit tingling coming. Um, this one has a little bit the uh, cup of style, a little bit of bubble. But not that strong. And sourness and umami almost the same time as it's coming. It's no sweet at all. It's very easy to drink. Let's see omachi. Wow. Couldn't tell from the uh, aroma because it was so like milky, milky smell, milky. It was milky aroma. But actually this one is more strong sourness. Sourness mum is coming together really same time. No sweetness at all. But it's very good all over umami and a little bit sour. Sourness is gone, but the umami still stay here. Well, both very similar, but it like compare the one by one, I can tell the difference. So probably if you I mean brine tasting or I, I couldn't tell which is how much which is go ahead. Very slight. It's different from the wine. Wine like depend on the kind of kind of grapes is so different. You can tell the differences, right? Like between mellow from between mellow and uh, Pinot Noir or Cab Cab Sauvignon, Cab Cab Carabinet Sauvignon. So you can tell the differences, right? But Japanese sake, so rice is very there are many different kinds of rices, but 
you cannot really tell obviously oh this is Yamada Nishiki this is Omachi or oh, this is this one is Gohyaku Mangoku probably professional people or very very experienced people maybe they could tell but um, me honestly I'm still learning like you guys so I can't really tell but um if you compare that way then like I can tell slightly different this is good to study for me as well as hopefully you guys learn something I categorize these sakes are as umami sake but I wavered between umami and fruity they were well balanced and easy to drink I liked them thank you for watching my video if you like please click the like and subscribe my channel help you guys